pray one more time. It's just you and us here now. And Lord, now may the meditations of my heart and the words coming out of my mouth uh, bring you honor and glory, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. So, the big question this brand new year. Who is Jesus Christ to you? Who do you understand him to be? What do you define or see in your mind's eye or imagine when you think of the name Jesus Christ? It seems to me that a right understanding of Christ is critical for our Christian faith and the object of our Christian faith and the power and the beauty and the strength and meaning and significance of our Christian faith is directly connected to the right answer to the question of who Jesus is. Our faith is only as good as the object, the person that we put it in. For lots of people nowadays, and maybe for some people here this morning, he's kind of a nobody. Historic figure, great teacher, love your neighbor as you love yourself, somebody who maybe has good moral teachings or values that it's probably worth raising your kids to know a bit about what Jesus taught and what Christianity has held to. And for others of you, he is much more than that. For many of us, I trust, this morning, we understand and define Jesus Christ as the Son of God. But what does that really mean, that Jesus right now is the Son of God? Just kind of rolls off your tongue. You've thought that all your life, maybe, but what does it mean? This week, I've been chewing on one answer to that from the Apostle Paul's letter to the Colossian church. The church We don't even know what the problem was in the church when he wrote the initial letter, but they had a problem with their Christology, their definition of who Jesus was, and it was too small or just missing the mark or falling short of who Christ really was. And so what is arguably the most beautiful portion of this letter, most powerful in my mind, Paul writes to them with this definition of Jesus Christ. The Son, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He's the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have supremacy. For God was pleased to have all of his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Now that is a huge, when you unpack it and fully understand what Paul is writing there, definition of Jesus Christ, and one, I believe, that is wholly worthy of living into and being a community around. The Son is the image of the invisible God, Paul writes. The Greek word translated in English to image is icon, which is where we get the word icon from. And in Christian circles, an icon, maybe you know the definition. You know, you may have thought it's one of those old Greek Orthodox paintings or a statue or something else in creation is an icon. It's not something you look at and learn something about God. It's something you look through in a moment, a mystical moment, and actually see and experience and know God. When you look through Jesus Christ, you see the face of God, our Heavenly Father. He is the face of God to humanity. 
And God was pleased to have all of his fullness dwell in him, Jesus Christ. Jesus is one, co-eternal with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Jesus is part of the three that are the Trinity. He is God. And according to Paul, he was the one through whom all of creation was mediated. Everything that is was mediated by Jesus Christ. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. Jesus is the means through which everything that is came into being. And Jesus is the reason everything that is came into being. All of this is because of him, and all of this is for him. Is that the Jesus you were taught about as a kid in that church you grew up in, that you read about? Is this the Jesus you believe in? I grew up in the church. I grew up in the church like you did, Jack, and we heard all about Jesus. And Jesus, primarily in my memory, was a mediator of salvation, forgiveness for sins and your brokenness and your shortfalls and renewal and new life and abundant life through him. A beautiful part of a, the definition of who Jesus is. I knew my sins were forgiven through him, like Paul writes, making peace through his blood shed on the cross. But that he also mediated creation, I never got. I must have missed that catechism class. He mediated the saving of everything, but in this scripture and many others, he mediated the making of everything. Jesus saves what he made He made your mind, he made your body, frailties included, beautiful. He made your capacity to keep rhythm and drum. He made your heart's capacity to have compassion and love. He made your baby. He made a community. He made Douglas fir trees science theories. He made all things. And through humanity, Christianity holds, I think rightly understood, Jesus Christ makes beautiful pieces of art. Sheila, through you, he makes great business plans and management plans for the office through you. He makes great daughters through you. Through you, who, he creates new products and brings them to market. Through us, he provides services, medical services, and other retail services, and other society-building good-for-the-city services. Through a whole cadre of people at City Hall, he does that. Through you, he discovers new cures, comes up with new ideas, develops new world-enhancing technologies. John, this time. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. Through Jesus, all things were made. Through Jesus, all things are being made. All that is right and true and good is authored by and created by the Holy Spirit of God. Where else could it come from? Therefore, where goodness, truth, meaning, significance, something that makes the world a better place happens, He, by His Spirit, is at work. When we create something good and true, we are co-creating that thing with the Spirit of Jesus Christ. 
Is that the Jesus you believe in when you're doing life all the time? When we fill this earth following God's cultural mandate to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth, we co-fill it with the Spirit of Jesus Christ leading the way because He is the one through whom all truth is authored and everything is made.